The commissioner of police commands his officers for standing on the front line of the crime fight. Preparations in full swing for the 2017 general election. And a video gone viral. We get some feedback on social media. The Bahamas Tonight, the national report starts now. Now in HD. Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The country's police chief commends his officers for doing their job, but he reminds the public that it takes a joint effort to break the back off crime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade is voicing his concern about the state of crime in the country tonight, noting that the country is overrun by criminals who would look to take control if allowed to do so. However, the police chief says, Officers are not prepared to let the criminals win. He says we all can play a part in breaking the back of crime. Here's Cleopatra Murphy. With the country's murder count on pace to surpass the record year of 2011 with 127, Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade urged the public not to be overly critical of officers who try to maintain order. Greenslade says these crimes are being committed by young men with no respect for themselves, the law, or the sanctity of life. 100 and counting of our citizens, a terrible record, and it would do well, do us well, to be very careful not to discourage hardworking men and women of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, and by, by extension, all law enforcement agencies, who stand as a last bastion of hope against these people who, if they had a chance, would in fact overrun this country. As concerns grow in the community about the high rate of crime, the Commissioner of Police says police will not lose the war on crime and will not take a back step to criminals. If you have an illegal gun in your possession, turn it in. If you confront an officer with an illegal gun, I'm asking police officers to do their jobs. That's not a mean statement. That is simply just a statement of fact. The commissioner of police says police arrested a man days ago for possession of an illegal pistol and a clip, but he saw the same man on the streets Sunday. It is something that courts have frequently been criticized for, but Greenslade says he will not castigate anyone. We have any number, numbers now in the hundreds, of healthy-bodied, Bahamian men who are not prepared to work, who do not care, have no respect for their parents, no respect for their communities, no respect for church, no respect for God, no respect for law enforcement officers, no respect for politicians. They are walking the streets of New Providence. Their names are known to us. And yes, I'm sometimes a bit confused by it all. Greenslate says he is not overly concerned that the country will exceed its past murder count, adding that jurisdictions across the globe are struggling with a surge in crime. He says, however, Bahamians have the ability to stop it and must come together to achieve that goal. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Thanks a lot, Cleo. Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade says police will not cower in the face of recent threats against officers through social media that have emerged following a number of police-involved shootings, some that have been fatal. He may declare that police have the capacity to locate anyone making threats against officers, something he says they can do quickly. At the same time, Greenslade says these incidents that are becoming more frequent are part of a global phenomenon as people turn to social media to vent. He says police are no longer policing just the streets, but cyberspace as well. Police officers are not going to be distracted by that. Uh, we understand uh, that ruse, and we're not going to fall for that. If you threaten people, we're going to arrest you and charge you for threats of harm, threats of death. death. And whatever community you do it in, we're going to come after you. There's no hiding place. If you are a criminal, you have bad intentions, you try to defeat the, law, the, the laws of a country, and you perceive that you have immunity, there's no hiding place. I'm not going to tell you of all of the skills that we have, but I believe the public is in, uh, smart enough to note 
that in the matters that have been reported recently, you saw how quickly those people were brought before the courts. And I'm certain there were three cases in point that you can go right to and get the date and times that they went to court. And that should tell you something about the ability we have to, in fact, track you. In news from the courts, murder accused Donna Facilli appeared in the Supreme Court today. She's accused of killing her husband, noted podiatrist Dr. Philip Facilli, at their home on March 24th. The Crown wanted an adjournment because there is an outstanding forensic evidence report. Her lawyers, Elliot Lockhart QC and Marie Ducille, Marie Ducille, objected to the application for the adjournment because they argued that a lot of cases had been cleared for today's date. The Crown had represented the court through the Vasily bail application, which has been objected to because there was no unreasonable delay in the case. Senior Justice Stephen Isaac said he was not minded to adjourn the hearing beyond Thursday and impaneled the dozen-member jury to return to the Supreme Court on Thursday at 11 in the morning. Preparations underway for the country's 2017 general election, with officials at the Parliamentary Commission's office saying they are beginning the process to ensure that the proper measures are put in place. In fact, they say there are some critical things that Bahamians hoping to cast their ballots should be aware of. We get that story tonight from Clint Watson. Work has begun at the Parliamentary Registration's office for the 2017 general elections. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall says the focus this month is training. Whatever we do here in New Providence must be duplicated in each family island, must also be duplicated at the overseas embassy in the U.S. and the, throughout the world, Bahamian embassy that is. In a matter of weeks, when October rolls in, the department will begin registration for the new register for the 2017 general elections. All persons who whose names appear on the current 2012 register now must represent themselves to register for 2017 because the constitution mandates that once the life of parliament is five years, um, we have to make preparation for a new register to complement the life of parliament for a new five-year period. We normally do that 18 months ahead. And if you're planning on registering, Hall reminds us what's needed. The primary document to prove that you are a citizen must be a passport. Uh, it also mentions the birth certificate. Um, because the birth certificate doesn't have a photograph, um, an applicant must present your birth certificate along with your mother's documents to confirm that your mother is indeed a citizen of the Bahamas. Okay? Um, we are not accepting no affidavit. Let me point that out. I said that on several occasions um, because the affidavit Although it purports to that you born in the Bahamas, under the Parliamentary Elections Act, the Parliamentary Commissioner does not have the authority to confer citizenship on anyone. Once you accept an affidavit, you are in fact conferring citizenship on the whole of that affidavit. Mm -hmm. The only person who has that authority is the Chief Passport Officer. While he says his department is moving steadily, there is an urgent need to increase the staff complement. I hope that ministries who uh, have been targeted more or less to redeploy persons that they will cooperate with us and let their employees be released because this is a national exercise. This is really truly national service and is bigger than any ministry or department. During the election period, the department usually seconders 80 to 90 people, including revising officers and poll clerks. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Two visitors believed to be employees of Disney Cruise Line made a video negatively depicting downtown Nassau. While Disney officials have condemned it, there was mixed reaction on social media to the video that sought to poke holes in what the Bahamas prides itself on. Sun, sand, and sea. Here's Janae Noel Ferguson. A video went viral over the weekend portraying downtown Nassau as a dirty, unkept hub to greet tourists. Now, the video was reportedly made by two Disney cruise ship employees, and in the video, the pair are seen visiting a number of spots downtown, highlighting sand with cigarette butts along Junkanoo Beach. A building prepared for fumigation is mentioned as a house in the city, and a rundown building is also described by the pair as a five-star hotel. 
The video takes the form of an infomercial about NASA, and the narrator indicates that people only visit because their cruise ship has brought them to the port of NASA against their will. It ends with the address www.nassaubahamas, get out now, and the contact 1-800-I-DON'T-FEEL-SAFE. Now, there were mixed views on social media from Bahamians on the video. One person commenting that it was embarrassing that we could no longer accept a little reality about downtown, while another called on Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell to put a stop to the video now. Now, when contacted, Disney officials would only say that the views expressed in the video do not reflect those of Disney Cruise Lines, who've enjoyed a positive relationship with the Bahamas and the Port of Nassau for years. Now, attempts were made to contact the Downtown Partnership Committee and the Ministry of Tourism, but no one was available for comment. Over the years, considerable effort has been made to improve the appeal of downtown with the newly constructed straw market and the revamped Pompeii Square, but many have agreed that there is still room for improvement. Now, just last week, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie addressed the environment of the city of Nassau as he launched the second phase of a national initiative to ensure sustainability of the city of Nassau. The project is funded to the tune of $1 million by the Inter-American Development Bank and is a partnership with the government of the Bahamas. It is through developing a sustainable Nassau that is alive with exciting cultural activities, opportunities for wealth creation for our young people, and hubs for creativity and innovation that the country will retain the local talent needed to grow our economy. It is also through this initiative for economic sustainability that the Bahamas will continue to attract the international resources we need for our country to thrive. The video has since been removed from the employee's page. From the newsroom, I'm Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNAS Network News. Stakeholders sharpening their skills in hope of minimizing the effects of climate change. And a sports legend laid to rest. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. This segment of the news is brought to you by Plant and Bride Couture, downtown Nassau on Parliament Street. Begin your happily ever after at Platinum Bride Couture.